In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Night's Watch Commander Ophel Yarwick from the Heroes Box 1. We're also going to be discussing a couple different uh, list approaches with him, so you can see the different ways that he gets utilized by the faction. Ophel Yarwick is what I would call a buff commander, and what I mean by that is his sole purpose for existing is to help increase the efficacy of the units that you're putting in your army to further outline that let's go over his commander cards to see what he's working with that really turns things up a notch the first one is mighty enhancement uh, this triggers and all of his cards trigger on this so i'm just going to say it once and then we can skip over the rest of it but when a friendly unit attacks before the attack dice are rolled the attack gains critical blow and you can re-roll any attack dice so Something to be very mindful of with his cards is that these are all referencing to an attack, not a melee attack, and not a ranged attack. So Othel Yarwick can put these cards out on melee or ranged, so you can really turn up a lot of units that you might have overlooked because they don't really have a whole lot of combat presence uh, when it comes to uh, their baked-in rules. Mighty Enhancement is a really great card if you're looking at it just through the lens of sworn brothers you probably won't find it that useful but having a card where you can re-roll your hit dice when you're locked in combat even if you're doubling up on that critical blow is still somewhat beneficial if you're bringing some the next card we've got is precision enhancement same trigger as before this attack gains sundering and hits of sixes do not allow defense saves so this is another phenomenal card to increase the combat output of your units. Again, not so effective or efficient on Sworn Brothers, but they will get the benefit of ignoring uh, defense saves on sixes. But we can take things that don't have any real combat out or combat that don't have any combat rules attached to them and kind of make them perform a little bit better with this one by giving them sundering and then that awesome ability of six is not allowing defense saves the last card he brings is serrated enhancement and this attack gains vicious and if the defender fails their panic test they become weakened so when you're playing into night's watch I think that many players don't really think of panic as something they have to really worry too much about, so they don't have to throw down their extremely high morale save or low morale, their good morale stat units. They can kind of float on the edge with those uh, sevens and sixes. Uh, but with serrated enhancement, we now get access to vicious, where that's a rule that we really don't have outside of uh, Alistair Thorne as an attachment. And uh, this can really go a long way in trying to get some extra wounds across if you feel like you're not being able to get all the output that you want. Plus, that weaken token is another real uh, fantastic way of getting uh, conditions out when you normally wouldn't have the chance to. So you can see what I mean when I say buff commander. Everything he does is only to help uh, the units that you're bringing along with you. Now, Othel is the the NCU commander for Night's Watch, which is great for them because they usually like to run pretty heavy on NCUs. Some people like to have the blank safety blanket of three to make sure that they get the vows they need. Also, with Night's Watch, it's not a bad idea to tank those activations and uh, force your opponent to throw more out there on the table in terms of like uh, trying to get the trying to get them to start activating combat units before you so having a free ncu is going to free up a lot of points for us if we're going to go with that three ncu uh limit uh so that's definitely something to keep in mind with him if you're having some problems with ncus and you're really not too worried about which commander you put in the list as i had stated earlier othel seems to benefit both ranged and melee units there's really no uh, benefit or downside to taking either or so we're going to approach list building with him in a combined arm sense so what i want to do is bring a good amount of shooting units to kind of sit back and pepper the enemy with uh, arrows or bullets or what have you and then i want to have a few melee bricks that can kind of catch anything that's going to try and come at the shooting elements to try and take them apart 
So the first thing I want to grab are two units of Builder Crossbowmen. They have Sundering on their crossbows, which doesn't really give us a whole lot of use from uh, Precision Enhancement, but we do get a ton of use out of Mighty Enhancement, and then we also get a lot of use from Serrated Enhancement. Not to say that... Uh, that precision enhancement doesn't help us at all. We still get to use the uh, the sixes ignoring armor saves, but it's not really where I'd want to put my or put that card in a pinch. I'd probably want to hold on to it for some of my other units. The ability of ready aim fire as well on them for for their order just means that when they're charged, they can declare a ranged attack against the enemy before they move. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's the wording on it. Oh, before they perform the charge action. But uh, this helps you get a lot of extra opportunities to uh, use some of those cards for Othel Yarwick. Maybe your opponent's throwing a weakened unit at them already. And when I say weakened, I mean like they're missing some ranks or something. And they have to try and weather that shooting before they get in. But you could really wipe out the unit because you're still going to trigger a panic test because this is a, a combat action that's being made here, or an attack. So they will, uh, they will have to take a, a panic test for that. The other unit we're going to bring in is that is the unit of Ranger Trackers. They're an extremely cheap unit of cavalry that get a lot of work done uh, with that vulnerable token that they give out via their marked target. Uh, that's really going to help out the bowmen too. It'll help make sure that the shots that they do hit really go the full distance. Uh, it also gives us a unit that can grab easy objectives but still have the mobility to get to where it needs to be in order to affect the rest of the table. Not to mention, ranger trackers have no innate combat abilities. They hit really well with their shots on their short bows, but they have uh, no sundering, no crit blow, no nothing. So all of Othel's cards are going to do nothing but turn these guys up to you know, 11. Uh, we're going to be able to move around the board real fast and shoot a lot more sundering shots where your opponent might not see them coming from. So the ranger trackers definitely are going to be making a, a, a an appearance in this list. So I feel like we've got enough shooting elements for Othel Yarwick, so I think we want to go more into the combat realm now. And the first one we're going to go into are the veterans of the watch. So... I'm running these guys with no attachments, and I know what some of you might be thinking right now if you've listened to me talk about Night's Watch before, is that Gren is almost tailor-made for this unit. He gives them the extra attack die to make them that much more uh, dangerous throughout the lo their longevity, uh, especially since they have a decent save, and Night's Watch is usually pretty good about healing things. But the only thing... Othel can give us that crit blow with uh with mighty enhancement and he can really crank up the rest of their melee output by giving them sundering and that vicious doesn't hurt them that much either so i don't think that the attachment's super necessary right here especially since uh othel can bring these cards back which now i realize i just didn't go over uh so othel yarwick as an ncu he has a, re a replace effect with the uh with the tactics board so when he claims his own instead of using the zone's ability you can either search your library or your tactics deck for uh, one of his commander cards and put it in your hand but you can also fish them out of your discard pile so we can make sure that whatever the veterans need in order to push their combat forward they're gonna have it as long as Othel's able to get on the board and pull those cards back up it also allows you to take uh, zones that your opponent might want if, if you're really not going to get a lot of benefit out of the uh, ability that's or the tactic zone that you're taking. So it's it's kind of like Craster in that sense, but with a lot more flexibility because you'll always get something that you'll need. So moving on from the veterans, we're going to go into something that's a little more punchy and a little bit more self-contained. And that's going to be a unit of Swarm Brothers with Jon Snow as the attachment. Uh, not only does that bring us Ghost, who can get some value out of Othel's cards, not a whole lot, but I mean, it's there. Uh, but we're getting a unit that throws a ton of dice, has uh, sustainability through their attack value, because John lets them go from 7, 5, 3, or 5, 4, to uh, 
yeah, it's 7542975, which uh, works pretty well for them because we're not going to be focusing a ton on the healing here. But this unit can help intercept a lot of the trouble things that are coming at your gun line. Then f if you're paying attention to points, we don't really have a ton left for NCUs, so I o am only bringing one other NCU in this list, and that's Bowen Marsh. He's going to help us shuffle th or cycle through our deck to get what we want when we need it, and uh, he'll also help us get those Othal cards without having to activate him first, so we could do something like we pull the Mighty Enhancement when... Uh, when Bowen comes down, we play the card when the Builder Crossbowman attack, and then we play Othel Yarwick on one of the Tactics positions to give us that card back so we can do some more things with it later. Uh, lots of versatility in that, in that set of actions. You can mix them up a little bit too and make things work out really well for you. So that rounds out the full portion of this list. Now, the some of the things to keep in mind when I built this list is that the veterans used to be uh, two units of conscripts because I kind of wanted to run body blocking more. And that was more so when I was playing against Stark lists because they don't so much care about tough, hardy units. But having a lot of uh, speed bumps kind of hurts them a bit, especially when you're just throwing conscripts at dogs and they can get a lot of benefits out of Othel's uh, uh, command cards. This list more so exists to kind of have a little bit more of a dog in the fight with uh, Lannisters or uh, the neutrals, especially like the Bolton side of neutrals right now, which is the only side we live in right now. But the veterans give us just enough to make sure that our uh, blocking brick stays where it needs to when it's trying to protect those shooting elements. So feel free to tinker with this list in order to help meet some of the needs that you might be uh, that you might be requiring to play your games. Also keep in mind that in a two-list pairing situation, you can tailor this to have a few weaknesses so that when you come across certain things that you might not be able to handle, you can pivot off of that and go into something else that might have an easier time dealing with it. The uh, other thing that I think I mentioned when we first started is that there's another list that I really think needs to be talked about with Ulthal Yarwick, and I think we've got a few battle reports on this channel uh, containing that list, but that would be the Ulthal Yarwick Double Flayed Men list. Now that list still hosts Jon Snow with, uh, with a Sworn Brother unit because it's still just a great module. Uh, it accepts vows really well too. Um, when you're bringing the two flayed men, you're not going to have a whole lot of things in there that can be targeted by vows. But the the big reason for bringing those is to be able to get sundering on them because the one element that uh, flayed men kind of get bogged down with is if they're in if they're getting into a really tough unit, it can be hard for them to cut themselves out if their critical blows and uh, vicious aren't really getting them anywhere. So being able to give them sundering is going to help them out quite a bit. It makes them a real force to be reckoned with. They're basically running around like angry sworn brothers on horses with a two plus save. And then when you've got the healing that the Night's Watch can bring, it gets to be a really uh, difficult experience to overcome with having two of those units and all of that support. Plus it just means that you're going to be able to concentrate your vows where you really want them to be and you don't mind switching them out because you don't have a ton of units that are going to really require that. I think sometimes when I play Night's Watch, I'll hold on to some vows that I probably don't necessarily need because I'm just really liking the card economy that I have going on. But the uh, ability to just not care about it and pitch whatever you want to because you don't think you're really going to get much use out of it because you are bringing so many neutral uh, points is a little bit of a liberating experience. It helps you get to what you want or helps you get to what you need in the list. Uh, so Othel Yarwick is a really unique and versatile commander. There's a lot of different ways you can build him. Uh, if you have any experiences with him, uh, feel free to post them in the comments below. Additionally, I really think the crossbow or the, the Night's Watch Builder crossbowmen are really nice in this list. Uh, being able to give critical blow and rerolls is just a phenomenal ability that I think really tilts them up to that 11 notch. I think you probably could call that name this list uh, up to 11 or something like that. 
If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and then hitting the notification bell. It helps me out as well as you since I don't really have a great track record of posting these videos on Facebook avenues before I upload them or when I upload them to YouTube. Usually there's like a day or two lag behind it. Uh, also, if you haven't visited it yet, check out our Facebook page. We end up talking about a lot of tactics there uh, along with some painting updates and I seem to use it as a continual dump for memes.